we're launching a fashion and lifestyle show here on The Young Turks called Stylog. Taking pride in your appearance and dressing and hearing it from real people. So make sure to stay tuned. We're going to bring you fun segments and just looking at how you can basically further yourself and be self-confident in how you dress. So yesterday we had a shooting in Canada and uh, of course a lot of people are talking about it. Uh, I made my own commentary yesterday. Fox News is all over. They've got their commentary. Uh, but when uh, Christy Teigen decided to tweet out something, this enraged Fox News uh, because she did not agree with their position. How dare she? Now she's a model so they're going to make fun of her for her looks. This is going to be fun. Let's watch. You won't believe this. Some tweets during the chaos in Ottawa causing a lot of controversy, and those tweets still continuing right now. Sports Illustrated cover model Chrissy Teigen. She's the one on the right taking to Twitter. She's married to John Legend, by the way. She's saying on Twitter, active shooting in Canada, or as we call it in America, Wednesday. And plenty of people took offense immediately, saying the model was making a joke as a uh, soldier was shot dead and the whole city was locked down. Tegan said it was not a joke, just a fact. Others critical of her for airing her views during the horrific scene. This one's, this one's tough to look at, Eric. Oh, yeah. You won't believe this. Somebody sent out a tweet in the middle of uh, the shooting. Uh, you're right, shocking. Uh, what is slightly more unbelievable is that you guys call yourselves family values and then... You're like, look at her ass on that magazine cover. And then here's another hot picture of her. Can you believe this? But we're just getting started. Andrea Tanteros is going to come in and make some wonderfully ironic comments. So Chrissy Teigen is known for, obviously, her lovely bottom and her food Instagram uh, pictures. Yeah. She should stick to that. This is the problem <laughs> when models start to talk. It plays into that dumb model stereotype because it's too soon for her to weigh in and also conflate gun control and crime in America with a global war against radical right. Islamic yeah. jihadism. And I don't, I mean, she clearly doesn't know about the radical uh, Islamic but, threat to the nation. She hasn't educated herself. But when she does stuff like this, you just got to shake your head. Me. Say, Here, you've got really? a family mourning the loss of their soldier's son. <laughs> okay, so let's break that down. Uh, Roger Ailes watches Fox News Channel. This is a well-known fact, uh, without the volume on, right? So he's always got it running in his office. It's been documented in several different places, uh, but he doesn't have the volume on. Uh, probably he'd lose his mind if he had the volume on, and that's why he's got it off. But the real reason that he does it is because he wants to see how it looks, because it's always got to look great. So that's why they hire hot anchors all the time on purpose, okay? And it is company policy that they must wear skirts. We know this because of the mole guy who used to work inside of Fox News and he wrote a book about it. And in a sexual harassment uh, seminar at Fox News, one of the anchors asked, is it okay for my boss to demand that I wear skirts? And they said, yes, it is okay. You must wear the skirts. And then they put the legs out there. And so Andrea Tenteros, what are you known for? How did you get that job on Fox News? And are you going to uh, blame Tegan? I hope she should stick to her looks. That's all she's. Done. Meanwhile, Roger Ailes has got her on a screen, not even listening to what she's saying. Like, oh yeah, there you go, Andrea. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I hired you for. Thank you, thank you, Andrea. We really appreciate your edification on this. If I were to use your logic, I might tell you to shut your mouth, right? Okay, but let's grant that that Roger Ailes, despite all that we know about how he hires and why he hires the woman at Fox News, uh, hired Andrea Tantoros as the one genius that is the exception to that rule. Well, then let's look at the substance of what she said. Can you believe she's making a comment about gun control policy issues in the middle of a shooting? She doesn't know anything. It's obviously too soon. That's why this is all about global Islamic jihadism. That is the correct political point you must make immediately. Oh, that's interesting. I thought it was too soon to make political points. But it turns out you don't mind making one as long as it fits your agenda. But when you're talking about guns, no, 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 don't ever talk about gun control. No, 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 it's too soon, it's too soon. It's always too soon. It's never on time. Don't talk about it. We don't like it. That's a point that might make some sense. Global Islamic jihad. Never too early. Let's strike right away. Oh, thank you, Andrea. Appreciate it. Next. <sighs> okay.
This is a guy we've told you about before. Uh, he's actually uh, at the state level in New Hampshire. He's a lawmaker there. His name is Steve Valancourt, and he's <laughs> well versed in ugly words. Uh, now, and ugly actions. He's one of the guys that voted uh, to keep money in politics. When there was a resolution in New Hampshire for free and fair elections, he said, no, no, we should not do that. We should keep money bathed in politics so that my donors can keep pouring that money right into my pocket. And he was critical in blocking that effort at the state level in New Hampshire. Now, he's also a guy that's known for some other things. He's the one who said, sick Heil, and gave the German Nazi salute uh, in the middle of uh, chambers. He actually had to be removed. This is the first time this happened in as long as anyone can remember, well over a decade in New Hampshire. The cops had to come and remove him from the chamber because he was shouting Sig Heil. Now, he says that it was because he thought the actions of the chair were Nazi-like, and so he was directing it at him. Okay, he had to come and apologize, otherwise the rest of the chamber did not want to see him again, including fellow Republicans. And they all denounced him and said his language was vile, etc. Now, this guy is back up to his old tricks. Now, in a race he's not even in, a race for the 2nd Congressional District for a U.S. congressional seat, uh, he has decided to weigh in. Now, it's Ann McLean Custer's uh, seat, and she's running against uh, Marlinda Garcia. Now, Garcia's a Republican. Uh, Custer is a Democrat. So Republican uh, Valancourt at the state level is going to jump in anyway with his genius political ideas on how this race is going to be decided. So what does he say? He says, well, Garcia is, quote, one of the moat, I assume he means most, one of the most attractive women on the political scene. If you're going to make trenchant political observations, you might want to spell check before you put them out in public, okay? Oh, since she's one of the most attractive, she's, he's like, oh, man, she really turns me on. I bet she wins. I hope she wins. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that analysis. But he's not done yet. He also says she's not so attractive as to be intimidating, but truly attractive. I got it, dude. I got it, you creepy perv. You're into her. I got it, okay? Uh, but he says, don't misunderstand. It's not just that the Republican is hot. It's also the Democrat is ugly. Oh, my God. So about Custer, he says she's, quote, ugly as sin. <laughs> let, let, me, let me see Valancourt again. Can I see a picture of Valancourt? Really, dude. We're, we're going to be getting into that conversation. Really. Okay. Commenting on, on people's looks. Fascinating. Okay. But he's not done yet. He then also says of Custer that she looks more like a drag queen than most men in drag. This, like, creature uh, sitting there in New Hampshire swallowing up the money like Jabba the Hutt, like, oh, I want the donations. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't corrupt me at all. <laughs> I like her. She's hot. Let's elect her. Her, she's ugly. Yeah. By the way, is he in any way right that Custer's in trouble? I mean, they're contested races, right? And it's, she's a Democrat. It's a midterm election. She's up by nine points in all the polls. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Of course, of course he doesn't know what he's talking about. So there's a new website called dumpadirtbag.com that is trying to get Valancourt unelected. Okay, he's currently the elected uh, lawmaker in his district in New Hampshire. How embarrassed are you if you're in that district? Oh my God, this guy represents you. Do, are you proud? Yeah, Valakai, the Sig Heil guy. Yeah, yeah, the one that to to talks about how he loves money and politics, and the one that talks about how hot the politicians and stuff. That's my guy. That's my representative, right? Obviously, some people are unhappy about that. Hence, dumpadirtbag.com. Uh, that site uh, leads to um, donations, I believe, for his opponent, Ryan Curran. So, election soon. Uh, good people of New Hampshire. <laughs> I, hey, it's your call, man. If you're proud to have this guy as your representative, have at it, Hoss. But leaves a lot to be desired. Put your arm around him. Put your arm around him. Give him a good hug, okay, and say, yeah, that's my guy. That's my representative. Get someone who actually cares about you, man, and wants to clean up politics. All right. Now, we switch from this to a little bit of fun uh, on the international scene. 
Uh, North Korea has decided that the Republicans in America are right. Uh, the proper response to Ebola is travel bans. Uh, this is a little funny here because uh, Young Pioneer Tours, which, believe it or not, organizes tours to North Korea. Don't do it. Anyway, uh, says that uh, North Korea has a travel ban now. They explain. We have just received official news uh, from our partners in the DPRK that as of tomorrow, tourists from any country, regardless of where they have recently visited, will not be permitted to enter. Okay. Ooh, man, you're going to destroy the international travel industry by doing this. All the tourism to North Korea is going to stop immediately. Oh, stop the presses. This is really unbelievable. What's unbelievable is that anybody went to North Korea for tourism. What's wrong with you? Oh, yeah, I'm going to have an adventure. We're going to look at concentration camps. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm so cool. All right. And oh, damn, I got kidnapped. Oh, now we're going to have to send a whole bunch of politicians to try to get me out. And then there's the Christian missionaries who go there. Yeah, that's lovely, right? And we waste all of our time with all that nonsense. Anyway, you can't do it anymore because uh, the North Koreans agree with the Republicans in this country. They say, travel ban, but we'll do you one better. Okay, we travel ban the whole world. We don't care if your country has Ebola. We don't care if it doesn't have Ebola. You're all banned. You are officially uninvited. All right, that's all. The fun continues. We go to Joni Ernst. Joni Ernst is running for a Senate seat in Iowa, and she wants you to know that she loves her guns. She's got an ad out about it. I'll show you that in a second. But uh, there's some new video that we found from uh, 2012. She's at an NRA event. Now, remember, she's running for United States Senate, where she would be an important part of the government. Now, let's watch what she said. I have a beautiful little Smith & Wesson 9mm, and it goes with me virtually everywhere. But I do believe in the right to carry, and I believe in the right to defend myself and my family, whether it's from an intruder or whether it's from a government, should they decide that my rights are no longer important. Oh, great. So you're going to fight the government that you're in. Are you going to bring your gun to Congress? Uh, are you going to use it inside Congress to fight your government? By the way, I don't know if you know this, but a United States Congresswoman was shot in the head. Okay, so, no, yeah, government, <laughs> screw the government, I'm going to go kill the government right after I join it. Well, if you hate the government so much, why don't you piss off? Why are you running for the United States Senate? That's part of the evil government that you need to use your gun against. In fact, she's got her gun in her ad, so let's show you that. She's not your typical candidate. Conservative Joni Ernst, mom, farm girl, and a lieutenant colonel who carries more than just lipstick in her purse. Joni Ernst will take aim at wasteful spending, and once she sets her sights on Obamacare, Joni's gonna unload. Oh, and one more thing, Joni doesn't miss much. Give me a shot. I'm Joni Ernst, and I approve this message. Give me a shot. I'll shoot everybody. I'm going to bring my gun everywhere, and I'm going to just keep shooting people. I'm Joni Ernst. Send me the United States Congress. Yeah, thanks, but no thanks. This country, I've said it before, we've lost our minds. Like, people get turned on by that. Like, they sit at home, and they get hard on that. Like, oh, she's not just got lipstick, man. Oh, she's got a gun. Oh, she's going to shoot everybody. Oh, that's so fucking hot. Oh, yeah. Let's make her a senator. Let's make her a U.S. senator. Do you know how many of these political ads for national office have guns in them? The candidates are like, yeah. <laughs> oh, Obamacare. What do I got here? I got like 18 different gu uh, gun sounds. And of course, I can't even find them. You know why? Because I'm in the Bush Bank. I'm just going to play the CIA man for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, I should have planned this better. <laughs> There's 50 choices here. How am I supposed to find it? Oh, here we go. This is what I'm going to do if I get into the United States Senate. <laughs> <laughs> These people scare me, man. The whole country scares me. Yeah, everybody's going to have a gun. It's going to be awesome. You should all bring it to Congress. It's going to be a lot of fun. There is some chance at some point there'll be a shootout between congressmen or senators inside Congress. You don't need the terrorists and you don't need like crazy mass killers. These guys are all trigger happy anyway. Somebody's going to say boo and they're going to be like, is it Obamacare? Well, sick it. 
and then there's all the other good guys with a gun, and then next thing you know, the whole place is. <laughs> and you know what'll happen? They'll get reelected. They'll be like, oh, that was cool, man. She shot everybody in the place. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but my favorite is when I go. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to the good tobacco chewers of America. <laughs> Where is she from? Iowa. Shit, I can't give her a southern accent. <laughs> he says we just, we just heard her. Come on, Iowa. Don't elect her. Don't elect her. Don't let her shoot the government. Okay. Let's move forward. <sighs> okay. So Republicans don't like it when uh, people who are not likely to vote for them vote. So the whole thing about democracy and encouraging voting, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 we are encouraging voting if it's the people we like. If it's the people we don't like, not so much. So in this case, uh, they're targeting young people. They definitely don't want them to vote. In North Carolina, uh, they have gone a, a step further. They're trying to actually remove ballot boxes and voting areas from colleges. Okay, so listen to this. The Republican-dominated North Carolina State Board of Elections uh, among other efforts, has sought to remove an early voting location from the campus of Appalachian State University, which has about 18,000 students, many of whom lean Democratic. Of course. So, uh, Huffington Post explains that the students there are suing to get their ability to vote back. I mean, they could drive a lot further, but obviously that means a lot less of them would vote. So they're suing, saying, no, 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 don't take, why are you taking the ballot boxes away? This is crazy. All right, so according to their lawsuit, Appalachian State's early voting site was the only one in Watuga County that went Democratic in the last two presidential elections and the 2010 Senate and 2012 gubernator gubernatorial elections. So the state uh, board of elections run by Republicans then says, okay, we got this county, it's all Republican except this one area where we got to have all these students. Why don't we keep the ballot boxes in the rest of the county and just take that one away? Gee, I wonder if this is political. I wonder if they're trying to stop you from voting. Can't quite put my finger on it. Okay. Now, if you think it's just Appalachian State, uh, you're wrong. Uh, county elections officials had already eliminated North Carolina State University's early voting site this year. So this is blocking early voting across the state and when it applies to young people because they know young people are more likely to vote Democratic. If you happen to be a young Republican, uh, who cares? You get disenfranchised uh, along with the Democrats, but that's okay. All right, we'll take our chances there, right? So when this went to court, the judge was asked them, well, okay, so what's your reason? When, you got to give me a reason, like well, why just take it away from this one place? And they're like, oh, mm. their reason was... So uh, here's Judge Donald Stevens, quote, the court, conclude no, uh, the court can conclude no other intent other than to discourage student voting. That's right, because that's what it's for. So uh, Republicans are very proud, very proud. Uh, so, but they're not alone. Uh, here comes Fox News, of course. And they're going to tell a very specific set of people not to vote. They, they, if you notice on Fox News, they never tell old people not to vote, right? They never tell, uh, you know, the demographics that are in favor of Republicans not to vote. But if you're a young woman, oh, we got trouble there. So take it away. To Bob's point, he is right that uh, uh, married women tend to be more conservative, but that also correlates with age. Yes. And with age comes wisdom. And it's a known fact that the older that you get, the more conservative you get. And I always tell young people, you don't have to wait to become a conservative. To get don't a waste your time. And that's the thing. But when you're young like that, you think the same reason why young, young women on right. juries are not a good idea. They don't get it. Right. They're not in that same like life experience of paying the bills, doing the mortgage, kids, community community, crime, education, health care. <laughs> they're every, like healthy and hot right and running world. around without a care in the world. They should be on jury. They have every right in the world. They're, they're, they've been, I didn't they, say they shouldn't when you're be. I just jury. thank and excuse them so they can go back on Tinder or Match.com. <laughs> First of all, a little bit of a bitter man there. Uh, they're all healthy and hot and running around. Okay, I got it, Kimberly. You no, know, you still look good. Don't, don't sweat it. <laughs> okay. And then she's like, oh, all the young girls, all they do is they're on Tinder and Match.com. Why don't you go back on there? You know that you were once a young woman, Kimberly. 
<laughs> I don't mean any offense on your age. As I said, you still look wonderful, and I don't know what your age is, but uh, all I want you to do is not discriminate against fellow women. But, of course, that's your whole reason for existence on Fox News. That's Fox News 101. They'll bring on a black guy to say, oh, the black community, it is all their fault. If they would just pull their pants up and respect the police officers, none of these problems would have happened. You need to bash Latinos. Believe me, they got Latinos to do that job. And if you need to tell women to shut up, sit at home, and not vote, Kimberly Guilfoyle. Why don't you go back on Tinder or Match.com, you hot, healthy chicks, okay? Uh, just know your role, okay? You don't know anything when you're young, and you're a woman. By the way, why not talk about young men who are also on Tinder, who, who I'm pretty sure are also driven by sex drives, right? Why not tell them to go back home? No, 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 because young women are stupid, right? Young men we can trust. Young women, nah, they're all on Tinder on Match.com. Kimberly Guilfoy, you make all other women so proud. I hope that paycheck that you use to pay the bills and all the things that you mentioned is worth it. Okay, now we move forward. And, of course, here we go again. All right, the <laughs> biggest problem in our country, the real problem. Wall Street Journal uh, has an interesting story, and then Huffington Post built upon it, uh, on what is happening in terms of fundraising in this election cycle. Now, Karl Rove wrote an editorial in the Wall Street Journal beseeching billionaires, saying, please come to the rescue. We need a billionaire cavalry. He says the Democrats are out raising them. Of course, that, that's not really true. It depends on which PAC and super PAC and party that you're looking at. They're both swimming in money, the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, and uh, only the billionaires count, as you're about to see. But anyway, he says to his de uh, fellow billionaires on the Republican side, come on out, we need your money. So he says, and funny enough, he says, we'll only get that victory that will only happen if Republicans open their walls to candidates whom they may have never met. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? You don't know these guys at all, but just trust me, they're for billionaires. Send them your checks. And guess what? It worked. That's how bribery works. What do you need to know the guy? You need to have dinner with? No, all you know is you give him the check and then he works for you and gives you tax cuts and cuts regulation. That's Republican 101. So since Rose plea, which was not that long ago, 21 billionaires and their family members have poured $19.9 million into super PACs backing Republican Party candidates fueling an October outside spending surge. 21 billionaires, not millionaires, billionaires. Oh, I do declare, uh, Republicans need some help. Oh, great, here's $20 million. Off you go. They're just waiting there. How many billionaires are there? Not that many, just, you know, about, what, 400 or so in the country? They're just waiting there to sign huge checks to the Republican Party, and sometimes the Democratic Party. So uh, who are the, uh, these donors that are now disclosed? Now, actually, Republicans are in a little bit of trouble because a couple of uh, huge Republican donors from Texas uh, died in 2013. Right? So these little old guys who have been around forever giving tens of millions of dollars to the Republican Party. They passed away, right? And so now Republicans are like, oh, my God, we, we lost two billionaires. To them, that's really important. That's like 10% of their donor base, right? So but don't worry. They still have these guys. Paul Singer, Ken Griffin, Julian Robertson, Daniel Loeb, Seth Klarman. They're all hedge fund billionaires. Okay, they all gave. They're part of the $20 million. Joe Kraft, he's a coal mining executive. I'm sure I'm going to run into a dentist any time now. Uh, Linda McMahon, World Wrestling Entertainment co-owner. Joe Ricketts, TD Ameritrade founder and Chicago Cubs owner. Robert Rowling and B. Wayne Hughes, they're just simple investors. And Robert McNair, uh, owner of the Houston Texans. It's a really depressing number of sports owners there. <laughs> okay, so these are the guys who own your government. You think they're sending those millions of dollars in checks and not expecting a return? Of course they want a return on their investment. This is how they buy our democracy. All right, so the rest of the article explains, oh, well, the Democrats have tens of millions of dollars in this pack, but the Republicans have even more money in a different super pack, and it goes back and forth, etc. But here's my favorite sentence near the end of this article. Where Republican super PACs received $25 million dollars from 21 billionaires in September, Democrats were given a little more than $20 million from just 11 billionaires. Nearly all of this $15 million came from Tom Steyer. 
they're playing squash with our democracy. They're like, oh, I do declare, okay, let's round robin here, a billionaire versus billionaire. Ooh, I, the Republicans have 21 billionaires and the Democrats only have 11 billionaires. Well, anyway, off we go to the squash courts. Who shall buy more congressmen and senators? Does, it, does this look like a democracy to you? <laughs> look at what they turned our government into. It's a freaking auction for, they go, they're like going to Sotheby's. Oh, I'll bid on Joni Ernst. Oh, jolly good. Uh, another million to Mitch McConnell. And then they take all that money, they put it into ads meant to deceive you. And the ads talk about, oh, yeah, the Republicans, oh, my God, they're so for the people and stuff. I mean, they're going to give tax cuts to these same billionaires. Oh, but they're for you. Wink, wink. And, gee, I wonder why TV never points this out, TV journalism. Oh, because so much of that money, the lion's share of that money goes to TV stations. Well, everybody wins, don't they, except for us. The people get screwed, and these guys are the elites that run the country. <laughs> if you don't go after these guys in a political sense, you are giving up on our government. You're giving up on the idea of America. This isn't what America is supposed to be. Our founding fathers would be mortified if they saw this. Go back and read Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Thomas Paine, George Washington. Read all of our founding fathers. One of the things they said is, even back then, they said, watch out for corporations. Can you believe that? These are some of the smartest men that have ever lived. They said, if you have concentration of wealth, they will go to try to buy your government. Okay. That's exactly what they did. And, but thank God that they put two things in the Constitution. First of all, they said you're allowed to amend this Constitution because from time to time government will get too corrupt and you're going to need to amend it. Geniuses. And by the way, sometimes Washington will get so corrupt you can't do an amendment through Washington. So, but you can do it through the state level. Let's do it. Let's do it. Get up, get up, get up. You're going to let these guys run your lives? You're going to let, let them laugh at you at their country clubs? Get up and fight back. That's what you're supposed to do. Wolf-pack.com, okay? I, I've told you this before. We're now getting word from Washington that some uh, organizations are afraid of Wolfpack. Goddamn right they should be. Goddamn right. Because we aim to get this country back. We're not like the Republican right wing or some extremist who say, oh, you know what? We, we're going to make our own country and we're going to call it Reagan. That was in the news today. New country of Reagan, right? No, no, we're not making a country of Bernie Sanders' stand, okay? No, we believe in America. And I believe a lot of Republicans believe in America. I believe a lot of Libertarians believe in America. But America is supposed to be a democracy, okay? As Benjamin Franklin said, you have a republic, if you can keep it, ma'am, uh, when someone asked them about the Constitution after uh, they adjourned, okay? Are we going to be able to keep it? It has already passed in California and Vermont. It is on its way in New Jersey, Illinois, and so many other states. Join the fight. Let's get the country back. Wolf-pack.com. Go. That was a segment from hour one of the show. Now for the better hour, the second hour. Drums. You can get the whole show on tytnetwork.com. Back on Young Turks, uh, Zach Harris writes in about the country of Reaganistan. Uh, hey, if they want to go off on, uh, and be their own country, uh, let them. Hashtag good riddance. Um, and then Jesus and I were talking during the break about uh, what kind of country we would form. Mm -hmm. And we've settled on Wasikistan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to Wasikistan. Oh, shit, it's odd. <laughs> Come on, you know you want to go there. Uh, so uh, Stacy Brunt on the oligarchy story, oligarchy story says, screaming from the mountain uh, top, wolf-pack.com, hashtag get money out. I'm right there with you, Stacy. obviously. Uh, Horikawa Otane asks, what happened to Ben Manquitz? He's never on anymore. Fired. <laughs> no, it's not even funny. Uh, no, Ben's on a TCM cruise right now. And uh, so, you know, of course, he works for Turner Classic Movies. You know, any weekend, boom, go on Turner Classic Movies, you're going to see Ben, and he introduced the movies, which is kind of cool. But actually, his father was a little uh, ill, and that's why he was away in Washington for a little while. But I think he's going to come back next week. That's why we have, part of the reason why we haven't been able to put together old school the last couple of weeks. Plus, there was a Sam Harris interview and a lot of other circumstances. Um, but we'll be back next week with that, okay? And... Uh, Gear says, Jenk, it sounds like you'd love Valhalla. I think I would. 
You know what Valhalla is? Nope. That is where, um, that's like the heaven for uh, fallen uh, warriors uh, who are Vikings, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like obviously. The, obviously, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm not doing that explanation justice, obviously. But it's not just heaven. It's for like heaven for badasses. Mm. Okay, it's kind of like Wasikistan, mm -hmm. <laughs> where everybody's constantly dropping elbows. <laughs> Finally, Base Nine Wario says uh, buffet of pornography. Both sounds awesome and kind of messy. <laughs> it's hard to argue. With. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, the, our, the movie about us, Mad as Hell, is actually a ton of fun. Okay, Hell look, yeah. there's some drums in there. There Still, there are some parts I'm uncomfortable with, right? But nonetheless, overall, it, it's a very interesting movie about the whole story behind the Young Turks and, and everything else. So check it out. You go to madashellfilm.com, madashellfilm.com. See what screenings around you. And if you get enough tickets sold in one area, then you, it'll be in your local movie theater, which is really, really cool. And the one in L.A. and the one in New York, I'm going to both of those. A lot of us are going to the L.A. one, so make sure you come out to the New York and L.A. ones. Okay? All right, let's move forward. All right. A few years ago, the Texas State Board of Education made some proposals to change history books. And to make a long story short, they wanted to whitewash history, okay? They wanted to gloss over some civil rights leaders or not include them at all. And they wanted to focus on right-wing leaders as American heroes. Now... The main publishing giants when it comes to these history books, Pearson Education and McGraw-Hill Education, have utilized some of the proposals because, of course, the school board had voted on it. And unfortunately, the books that get published in Texas are utilized in school districts throughout the country. Okay? And as a result, the Texas Freedom Network decided to find historical scholars to look at the new books to decipher whether or not they're realistic, whether or not they are actually doing history any justice. And here's what they found. First of all, just a little bit of semi-good news, okay? Kathy Miller said the following, In all fairness, it's clear that the publishers struggled with these flawed standards and still managed to do a good job in some areas. On the other hand, a number of textbook passages essentially reflect the ideological beliefs of politicians on the state board rather than sound scholarship and factual history. Damn. That sound you just heard was an elbow dropping on Texas's head. And that's like the semi-good news from their analysis, okay? okay. Which means wow. it just gets worse. Okay. okay. So one thing that they definitely do is they try to get the students to question the separation of church and state, mm -hmm. okay? So the way that they do this is as follows. The Texas High School Social Studies Curriculum Standards asks students to compare and contrast the wording of the Constitution's Establishment Clause, which prohibits state religion, with the phrase separation of church and state, which was established during later Supreme Court decisions. Now, what's the issue there? According to one of the scholars, it implies there is no such thing as the legal doctrine of separation of church and state. Okay. Which is, of course, not true, right? right? Uh, first of all, it's clear that it says, we shall not establish a religion. And these guys always claim to be strict constructionists. Okay. It's right there. You have trouble reading, right? Mm -hmm. But it, technically, the words church and state weren't used. Different words were used to convey the same exact meaning. But that's okay, because the Supreme Court later came and it did use those words. Oh, we left that out. Oops. Exactly. All right. So that's problematic because one thing that you've noticed in a lot of conservative school districts is they want to do away with some science classes and they want to replace them with creationism, right? right. Which is absolutely disastrous. When you get rid of the theory of evolution and you get rid of fact and you replace it with religion, then all of a sudden you lose all rationality. But you see, Anna, that's why it's a damn shame that Muslims are running the Texas school board. Because Muslims love to intermingle their religion with the government. They want the religion to take over the government. That's the problem with Islam, yeah. right? And they want their religion to run everything. They have this thing called Sharia law. And, it, and they want it to rule us instead of our sec secular constitution. Hmm. I it seems like that's what they want to do. They're Christians, right? Mm. Fascinating. So let me give you more. Um, so they also talk about, or they don't really talk much about, things like slavery and segregation. They gloss over them in these new textbooks. According to the report, notably the curriculum standards also say that students should be able to identify, I'm sorry, this is the religion thing. Let me just uh, state this really quickly. I forgot about it. In terms of religion, 
Notably, the curriculum standards also say that students should be able to identify Moses as someone who informed America's founding documents. Oh. Something critics say is an example of the State Board of Education trying to insert religion into the classroom. That's an important one. I'm glad I included that. Okay. <laughs> I have to explain this story. A bunch of uh, Israeli archaeologists, a couple of them, um, went to find archaeological records of Moses in Egypt. And now uh, they were not biased against it, they were actually trying to find it, mm -hmm. right? And they were, so they knew that it wasn't going to be overwhelming because otherwise we would already know a lot about it. But they th figured obviously if you go in, you're going to find some record because the Egyptians actually back in the day kept great records. You know, Ahmed sold loaf of bread to Mehmed, et cetera, right? And they find all that. Mm -hmm. No record of Moses in any way, shape, or form, not the name, not the things he did in the Bible, not any of it. If he had split the Red Sea, they might have written that down, right? The frogs falling down from the sky, they might have written that down. None of it, none of it. Moses didn't even exist, let alone affect Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson thousands of years later. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and look, uh, the point that I want to make before we get to the slavery thing and everything is they're always complaining about public education being utilized as a tool of indoctrination. What is this? This is indoctrination. Okay, you are literally taking facts out of history books because you want to indoctrinate the youth so they follow your political agenda and your political ideology. It's sick. So if that didn't disgust you enough, let's now move on to slavery and segregation. According to the analysis, the curriculum standards seem to minimize some of the darker aspects of American history, such as slavery and segregation. While discussing Civil War history, the elementary school standards list uh, sex section sectionalism and states rights before slavery as the primary causes for the conflict. Do you get that? So when they talk about the Civil War, for instance, they talk about property rights as opposed to the Civil War being about slavery. Right. Here's a little problem with there. The property rights they were protecting was the rights to hold human beings as property. It, nice it might have helped to yeah, it might have helped to clarify that a little bit. So this whole idea that, there, that slavery uh, was not the principal reason for the Civil War is total and utter BS. Now, if you're going to give a sophisticated, nuanced I interpretation of what happened and the cause of the Civil War, of course you should do that. Was slavery the only reason? No. There were economic factors. There was many different factors, right? But was slavery a principal reason? That was the main thing they disagreed on. Of course, of course it was a principal reason. Not other property rights, which they were slightly aggrieved by. It's crazy. So they continue. Black codes, the KKK, or sharecropping, the term Jim Crow never appears. Incredibly, <laughs> racial segregation is only mentioned in a passing reference to the 1948 integration of the armed forces. So, and that's, of course, when we got rid of segregation, right? So they're like, oh, segregation, it never happened in the first place, but this is when we got rid of it. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. So Moses is in there, but... Segregation and Jim Crow is not in American history. Let's whitewash history, okay? Yeah. Let's indoctrinate the youth. Okay, final thing, economics, right? Okay. Of course, oh, this we, is going to be We want to talk about, you know, different economic systems, what works, and what do you think they want to push for? Mm -hmm. Deregulation, of unmitigated course. capitalism, here right. it is. The standards connect capitalism with the conservative ideal of limited government, asking students to be able to explain why a free enterprise system of economics developed in the new nation, including minimal government intrusion, taxation, and property rights. Yeah, okay. Teach history. Now, when you look at founding fathers, they had differences of opinion on whether there should be a central bank or not. For example, Alexander Hamilton favored one. Most of the founding fathers believed in a very, very limited government, but not necessarily in terms of regulation. And some wanted taxes, some didn't want taxes. Teach the actual history, both sides, both sides. But don't pretend that our founding fathers were all named Ronald Reagan. <laughs> okay, that's just not the case. And so obviously they're trying to put their politics into this. Yeah. But to be fair, uh, it was a critical turning point in American history uh, when at Bunker Hill we defeated the Canaanites. So I'm glad that they've got that in there. Let me end this story on an amazing fact. Do you know, and I just uh, know this because I did a lot of research on religious polls mm -hmm. throughout the world, that on average Muslims across the world believe in evolution significantly more than Christians. But they're the they're out of all the religions they're the worst. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. So that except for that part, 
Uh, obviously, that's true. So I'm the polls must have been wrong. All right, you you just keep like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he, he tries to inject that thing in every story. <laughs> We're like talking about By like way, nude same... selfies, and he's like, and then they said that the Muslims are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, it's in my mind. It's in my mind. I know. Top of mind. All right, look, uh, two quick things on that. Uh, one, I'm actually resisting. There's like a million things I, I want to say. I can feel it. I can feel it. Yeah, so like during the interview, we, we kept jumping from topic to topic to topic, and I was going to give polls. Uh, on the Muslim world, and because Sam said something along the lines of, and go check for the interview for yourself, like in Turkey, 30% of people in favor of killing apostates. It's actually not true. Uh, it's two things. First of all, they only ask the people who already believe in Sharia law within that country, mm -hmm. and Turkey was at 14%, within the people who already believe in Sharia law. Okay, mm -hmm. so the numbers are actually much lower, et cetera. So, but there was a million of those things that I wanted to get to. That's why we're going to do part two, where we do six hours. <laughs> anyway, well, so the last thought on that, and this is a fun mind experiment. We will. We're it, so for the LA premiere of Mattis Hell, we're going to invite all the people we know, to Oliver Stones, yada yada, right? Have some fun, and the West Clarks, just like our friends, and and then some uh, others that we know, and two people we know. Around here are Sam Harris and Rez Aslan. Oh, damn. Could you imagine if the worlds collided? Okay, they're, what they're if like, a fight breaks out at the screening? What if they're mad as hell? Oh. <laughs> Could you imagine at the premiere, uh, Reza and Sam run into each other? And then all of a sudden, the entire universe collapses. Matter and antimatter have met, and it's over. They don't like that. <laughs> no, no, no. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. We're going to invite both of them. I hope they both come. Yeah. They don't have to talk to one another. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, but we're on good terms with both of them. Yes. All right, God bless. Let's go forward. All right. A school district in Nebraska is allowing their senior students to take photos with guns for their senior pictures. And some people think that this is questionable, but I actually think it's not a bad idea. Let me give you the details. The school board members voted 6-0 to zero on Monday to allow such photos in the Broken Bow public schools after parents pressed for the change. Okay, Apparently this is a rural area of Nebraska. They have a very small community, and they like to go out and hunt. They like to shoot. They go skeet shooting. Um, so skeet, since, skeet, skeet. since this is considered a hobby for a lot of the kids, they're like, well, can't we pose with our guns or with a trophy that we won through hunting? Uh, yeah, yeah. According to the superintendent, the board, the board, I believe, felt they wanted to give students who are involved in these kinds of things the opportunity to take a senior picture with their hobby, with their sport, just like anybody with any other hobby or sport. So first of all, I'm already opposed to this. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they put the hobbies away. Like, if I came there with my fantasy football trophy, how dorky is that? I know. Okay, so hold on. Before before you do your commentary, though, there's one really important element to this story. It, go. Initially, I thought that these pictures were going to be taken on the campus. Because when I was in school, any type of picture that was in the yearbook was taken on campus, yeah. right? These are taken off campus on their own time, and then they submit it for the yearbook. Okay. That's the way it works. Well, and things have developed since I was a kid. Yeah, for us, they'd be like, up against the wall, motherfucker. You'd be like, oh, what? And then take the picture, and then you're yeah. moved on with your life. There would right? be like a fake tree and a weird, like, forest background. You'd have to be like, oh, <laughs> That's the same thing I did. I was like, this. <laughs> okay. Anyways, so these guys now, they're like going off into the woods. Did that. The girl in the beginning had like a deer antlers or something, right? Is that some sort of trophy she won I or something? like, go back to that last this picture. This poor guy is going to shoot his dog. I kind of, look, I'm not a fan of guns, right? But I kind of like that picture. Like, look at that depth of field. Look at the lighting. It's like a mirror took that picture. All right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's just one last, one last detail of that last picture. Oh, I truck. didn't even see the deer in the background. Is that alive or dead? <laughs> the, uh, the one with the truck. I'm sorry, just because we're going to detail. I'm a Ben Mankiewicz this real fast. Uh, see Jesus in the middle of the Chevy sign? Oh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that. You know why? No, no, it's a well-known fact that Jesus was pro-Chevy. He would have... <laughs> Jesus uh, once was offered a ride in a Toyota. He said, and, <laughs> over my dead body. Okay. That is epic. Jesus loved guns and Chevys. Okay. Uh, look, put... 
Okay, whatever. okay, fine, it's fine. What they all right, like. all right, I'm or fine whatever. With it. Yeah, no, no, I'm not fine with it at all. Uh, don't, no, don't give the kids, they're in high school, don't give them guns and then glorify it and put it in the yearbook picture like, oh, isn't it cool that my teenager's got a shotgun? No, it's not really cool, it's really dangerous. All right, but I know, I know, local culture and you guys are like Daniel Boone and all that stuff, right? But you know what it looks like to me, honestly? It looks like the Taliban. I know, bloop, 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 you got, everybody's really? mad. Yeah, yeah. Because that look, doesn't, okay, look. I've, I've never seen know, a picture. I've never that seen. That looks a, like the Taliban, really? Yes, yes, you're, it does. You're insane. No, now you're going too far. No, I'm not going too far. You, yes, so obviously, are. she's the whitest person you've ever seen. She's blondy blonde. She and, has a smile on her face. When was the last time you saw the Taliban she, okay, smile? Right, yeah. Well, <laughs> would you smile if you lived in Kandahar? Okay, but so and and she's not all covered up. She doesn't have the burqa, yada yada. But. The, but the Taliban. So she looks nothing like the no, Taliban. No, no, but it's not, I'm not saying they look physically look like the Taliban. I'm saying the Taliban in every single picture with a gun, mm -hmm. right? Every single picture is the same. These guys, same thing. Uh, they want their right to Taliban. But are they holding antlers? I think uh -huh. that's the important question here. <laughs> right. No, they're ho holding the head of a goat. <laughs> right. That's the <laughs> only difference. I don't know. I don't look. I'm in favor of gun regulation that makes sense. Don't get me wrong. I think that we do live in a gun crazy country. I, considering considering their community, considering that this is off campus and it doesn't put anyone else in jeopardy except for the person who's holding the gun and possibly the person taking the picture. Yeah. By the way, the photographers say that before they take the pictures or before they even work with these kids, they make sure that the guns are unloaded. And I know accidents have happened. You're going to bring that up, right? Yeah. But... Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. I, but we did find audio from one of the picture shoots and it's, it went like this. You remember that Austin Powers? You probably don't. Austin yeah. Powers ending of the first movie. Yes, yes, no, 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 yes, yes, no, 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 no! Okay. <laughs> Can we just have like a really quick fun discussion about what we would hold if we had to do a senior picture with a prop? What, uh, what would our prop be? Let's save it for the post game. That is a good conversation. All right, all right, let's okay, do it. Because, okay, I'm going to have a lot of options. Okay. okay. I'll tell you one right now. Mm -hmm. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Me holding like a big fat sub. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's good. All right, so we'll do more of that for the members of the post game. Next. All right. Halloween is quickly approaching, and I wanted to figure out exactly how much do Americans spend on Halloween each year. Well, the number, the total number, is about 7.4 billion dollars okay Jesus on Christ. costumes decorations candy now let's break it down for you and figure out exactly what they're spending their money on well Halloween candy alone can run up to two billion dollars every Halloween and that has been the case for the last three years two billion dollars just candy just candy I, okay. I hope that the about two dollars of that is candy corn Okay. Candy corn is disgusting. It is. Okay. Nobody should spend a dime on that though. Okay so. but here's the more egregious part as you guys probably haven't figured out yet. I can't stand Halloween. I yeah, hate boo, Halloween. Right? So I'm like, boo, I'm reading this and I'm like, American. I don't care. Taliban. Don't care. Halloween sucks. Uh, <laughs> here's the part that's crazy. Please leave. Please <laughs> leave. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay. People will cough up $300 million on Halloween costumes for their pets. No! I thought it was going to be three fifty for 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 people. No. For their pets. For their pets. Man, well, look, I know it's a big country, but... Just, uh, but I would no, see God bless, that Halloween God costumes for pets are kind of cute. No, and they are. They are. Yeah. I actually have... I'm, I, unlike un-American Attic Hesperian, I have no problems with any of this. It's not my money. You want to spend your money dressing up your pet? I'll probably see it on BuzzFeed and it'll look kind of cute. I got no problems. Yeah. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I don't know why I'm being bah humbug. I just am. Um, but Ironic, because you have the most Halloween outfit of all time on <laughs> right know, now. I know, I okay. know. You know, okay, and just really quick, let me explain why I don't like Halloween. I just feel so much pressure every year. Mm -hmm. Like, what am I going to be? I got to go out and buy a costume, and I got to like... a lot of pressure. Slutty nurse, <laughs> slutty uh, witch, uh, slutty, like... <laughs> And we've talked about this in the past. Maybe Why I is just that the dress only the way I always do and be a slutty reporter. Oh, yeah. no, that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> so, no, but the reason I bring that up is now women, like, feel all this pressure yeah. that they've got to dress really skimpy. Yes. Now, I mean, as a guy, I'm kind of in favor of how that trend developed, but as, you know, but overall, there's, you shouldn't. There's no reason for that. It's made up pressure. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, I feel a lot not, of pressure to dress skimpy, though. It's not even about pressure to dress skimpy. Sure, it's just... Gun. 
Yeah, do that. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> you know I have the biggest triceps in America. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> All right, anyways, okay. let's keep going. All right, okay, so <laughs> Halloween is not uh, the most expensive holiday, as you guys can imagine. Here's some more statistics that are interesting. Mother's Day and Valentine's Day both command double the dollar amount uh, that's spent on Halloween. See, that's why I love Halloween. Like, Valentine's Day, flush it down the toilet, right? Like, whatever it is. Uh, roses, ah, uh, three days gone. And you don't even get any credit for it. You only get, it's subtracted credit if you don't get the flowers. Like, but you're supposed to get the flowers, so it's not like, oh, honey, you got me flowers. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, the money flushed down the toilet. Okay. You All the cars. Awesome? Oh, and hey, I love going to dinner. We're going to dinner. Oh, three times as much today. Yeah. Oh, pff, yeah. Dude, I'll go tomorrow. I'll go to the day after. I hate Valentine's. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, it's not because I don't like to celebrate my love for my hubby, mm -hmm. okay, for my spouse. I do. I just like to spend it on 364 other days when it's not as expensive. Yeah. So give me Halloween. Give it to me all day long. Halloween's much better. Yeah. Okay, I, I agree in some ways. I just don't want to dress up. That's my biggest issue. At least, at, least, at least Valentine's Day, like, you do something for someone else. And by the way, I'm a big advocate of, like, spoiling my boyfriend on Valentine's Day, right? So, like, I want to cook. I don't want to go out to dinner. I want to cook him a dinner and, like, have a bottle of wine at our place. And it's, it's much more romantic that way, right? So, but the one thing that I will say is there's nothing better than getting flowers or getting a card or getting whatever on a day when you least expect it. Like, that's right? much more meaningful than, like, oh, here's a holiday that I'm obligated to give you something on. <laughs> but could you imagine? You do it. You do it on a random day, October 27th. You give your wife flowers and a card. And she's like, oh, that's so great. And then on Valentine's Day, you're like, you remember when I gave you that th stuff on October 27th? So we're all even now. Yeah. Okay. No, but then you got to get it to her again because otherwise you're an asshole. Yeah. See, and in Halloween, if you don't dress up, you're not an asshole. Yeah, you are. No, you're yeah, not. Yeah, people are judging no, you. No, you're, you're not. You're at a party. They're like, dude, where's your costume? And you're like, I don't know. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to be. I didn't want to spend $40 you on the costume. You know what? Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solve this whole issue for you. All right, do it. Okay. Uh, buy a Walmart <laughs> <laughs> thing. What, what do we call those? Aprons? Okay. Mm -hmm. And just wear it every year. <laughs> Dave Kohler. Dave <Kohler> strategy. <laughs> See, li uh, he was wearing it. I swear, in 1991. Were you alive in 91? What? Yes, I was alive. I was five, though. You were five, and Dave Cole yeah. was wearing the Walmart apron. Still wears it every Halloween. Okay? That's awesome. Who doesn't love Dave Kohler? Okay. See, that's... That's it. Oh, that's all or, you need. Or, or you go the, the the route that we did. You know, we grew up without much money. You know, you put on anything and you're the dead this. Just put a drop of blood on your mouth or on your nose. You're a dead businessman. You're a dead doctor. Put on some old scrubs. You're a dead this. So you have to be scary something. So you just put on regular clothes and you're a dead okay, person. Well, I don't want to be scary. I want to be cute. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Well, then it's your fault. Yeah. Then you're particular, <laughs> then it's your right? <laughs> yeah. It's, okay. Look, it's my. My son turns out to be a little bit like me. I don't know. Maybe it's just a random question. I'm sure it is. But uh, he uh, came up with the same exact idea I came up with when I, when I was a kid. He's like, why don't I just go in my pajamas and I'll be pajama man. Oh, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's what you did last year? So, okay, apparently it's a common idea. But I did. I won you know, Halloween when I was much, much older. I walked around the neighborhood in my pajamas. And I'd walk in and knock on the door, give me some candy. I once more walked around in my football uniform when I was a senior in high school, and I made them put the candy in my helmet. Okay. And they're like, aren't you a little old? No, I'm not. Where's the candy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That went, that went different places. That was but, fun. But, but it was fun. I All liked right. it. God bless. Okay. I hope you guys did. We hope so. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's time for a post game. In the post game, uh, we will talk about uh, gym etiquette. Um, we will talk about what we would have posed in our high school pictures with, and many other things. I haven't done old school in, in two weeks. I've got all these old school stories built up. All right. Bye bye. You liked that, didn't you? Well, if you like that, you'll love the whole show. TYTNetwork.com. Get the whole show as a member.